Hey there, this is Miranda on the campus of Huntington University. You're listening to Rooted, an in-depth conversation with interesting people and topics that matter to the Forrester family. Make sure you subscribe to Rooted on iTunes, Google Play, or Spotify. You can find us by searching Forrester Radio Rooted. And you can catch Rooted Thursday evenings at 7 on 105.5 WQHU. Today I'm joined by Dr. Lance Clark. Dr. Clark is the Dean of the Arts at Huntington University, a film professor, and the director of The Glenn Frank Story. Dr. Clark, thank you for joining me. So can you tell us a little bit about how you got to Huntington University? I came to Huntington the fall of 1993, and I had actually applied to teach at Huntington in 1991 after I got my master's degree in cinematography and wanted to come back and teach. That was my dream. That was always my dream. Come back to Huntington. I wanted to do that. And it didn't happen in 1991, but I had thrown my hat in the ring. And then two years later, uh, the academic dean at the time, Jerry Smith, was going through some, you know, vitas and stuff and saw mine and reached out to me uh, to say, hey, we have an opening. Would you come apply? We didn't have film. We had, you know, it was TV and radio. Mm -hmm. In 2004 was when we, uh, I I took a sabbatical and did a, a whole semester of research on what is the future of digital media? What does that mean? I mean, think 2004. I mean, that's pre-everything, pre-Facebook, <laughs> yeah. pre-Twitter, pre... And yet I knew something was out there. And and when I say me, my students knew something was out there. There was more to what we were doing than, than radio and television production. So I took a sabbatical, traveled around the nation, visiting other schools that had something to do with the words digital and media, and came back and proposed, um, put a new program together. And in 2005, we launched launched it. That's really cool. So a lot of people have been hearing about this Glenn Frank project. Mm. Um, can you kind of tell us a little bit about uh, that story? Yeah, so uh, the Glenn Frank uh, story is a story of something I relate to as a child. I mean, it is comes from my, my history. Uh, my parents were... Um, United Brethren Pastors back in the uh, mid to late 60s, and mm, they were charged to go to southern Michigan, and they were charged to see if they could get four small rural churches to come together to form one church. My dad was an itinerant pastor, so he'd just hop around Sunday to Sunday and visit this church, and then go eight miles and go to this church, and go five miles and go to this church, and then go four miles and go to this church. It was like, they're all within like a stone's throw distance mm-hmm. of each other. And they're like, well, let's bring them together. And so that's what he's charged to do. And um, as they were getting ready to to build a new church, they really felt the need to, to do this debt-free. They didn't want to take, and I think, late 60s, okay, early 70s, they didn't want to bring a lot of debt on. And they wanted no debt. They felt, let's just build this debt-free. And they were planning to do that. They, they had a huge auction, and everybody brought all their antiques and all kinds of stuff in. And they raised, I think, $10,000. And they bought some land, and they got enough money to put a foundation in and built, put some walls up. And they had their lead contractor um, um, had a heart attack and couldn't help out anymore on the project. And it just it looked like everything was just going to, like, nosedive mm-hmm. for the for the future of this this dream, this vision, this calling to build this church. And then literally uh, my dad and some of the folks um, got on their knees and prayed in the middle of a cornfield where they were gonna, the building site was. And within minutes, this old jalopy car, you know, comes barreling in off uh, into the field and out steps Glenn Frank. And he was, uh, he stepped out. He was, he was a licensed car- carpenter. And he was also a country western singer and had somehow heard that this church was building something and maybe they could use his help. He had no idea that he was like an angel in the (laughs) unawares, you know. And he stepped out of the car and said, hey, I'm just here to help. Is there anything I can do? And they're like, you're a licensed carpenter. Yeah. And they he he volunteered his time and and uh, he was an alcoholic. Turns out he was a you know, he um, was he had a lot of problems you know mm-hmm. he was he was definitely a hurting person hurting individual and the, the community really kind of got around him and really kind of loved him back into you know uh, his faith he, he you know he he uh found his faith again and and uh, rededicated his life to the lord and got saved and sobered up immediately didn't touch another drop of alcohol after about it was about eight weeks 
of mm. the community, loving around him. He came over to our house every night for dinner, sang songs on the guitar. Uh, he had this beautiful rosewood, Brazilian rosewood guitar, Martin guitar that he had used. Um, and I have. We, we mm-hmm. have that now. And then he um, got killed in a head-on car, car accident uh, not long after um, he got back on the right track. And that just devastated. Again, this is round mm-hmm. two of like, yeah. oh, my gosh, you know, this is devastation. And then his sister was a waitress at a really fancy country club. She had this um, multimillionaire patron. And um, he's like, well, what is this? I'm like, Glenn wanted to help this church, and this they were building a school. And he goes, what? Let me hear out more. So he brought my dad in to meet with him. And and then um, he ended up, you know, through a series of events, you know, writing some money, you know, paid off the debt. Of, you know, there was no debt. He just paid off the church and helped build it. And it was a, a real miracle story. So really yeah. it was Glenn Frank's – it was a – story of Glenn Frank coming into this community, being embraced by the community, um, finding his faith in Christ, and then renewed hope in life. He tragically dies, and then a few weeks later, he brings a total renewal to the community, back to the community, because through his death came, you know, this amazing yeah. connection to uh, the debt church being paid off, debt-free, and everything. Still there today. Church is still there today. Thriving, That's amazing. Active church. Yeah. So how was like the writing process having it like, like it's based on a true story and it, that you've lived through. So how was yeah. writing for that? So um, Professor Matt Webb wrote the screenplay. Um, we Together we did a ton of research on the story. We went up to Southern Michigan and interviewed a lot of, spent hours interviewing people that were alive at the time. Um, my mom is still alive. So we were able to interview her and get the story. Um, my dad is no longer alive, was not alive when we started writing the story, but he had recorded, um, himself telling the story and had, there was actually a memorial service for Glenn Frank Mm -hmm. at the church. After they built the church, they had a special memorial for Glenn and you can hear, um, they had some songs of Glenn singing and they, we have, I have those recordings of him singing. I also have people telling their story, their connections to Glenn and all that. So we had all this information about Glenn and then, um, Matt then, uh, you know, wrote, took the next year and a half and wrote a screen, several, ver- you know, rewrites of it. <laughs> yeah. But now we have, you know, probably a, a ninth or tenth, um, you know, rendition of the, sc- of the screenplay of the story. Mm-hmm. So um, last May, a lot of like students and industry professionals came in and kind of like helped jump on the project. What was that like? Oh, my word. The experience of bringing industry professionals from, you know, California and Chicago and Atlanta and all over the place uh, was such a th- an amazing experience. And it really helped feed into what we're doing now with our capstone film um, major here at Huntington University, which is about industry professionals who have a heart and want to pay it forward and mentor the next generation of filmmakers. And we got to live that out for a solid, you know, couple weeks in May where we shot um, about 10 pages of the screenplay for some highlight media, promotional media, and so forth for the film. And um, it was an amazing experience. I mean, to see the professionals interacting with our students, to see the growth that happened with our students who kind of came into the week, uh, you know, you know knowing enough, obviously, to be very, very dangerous. I mean, our, our, <laughs> our students are, are they know what they're doing, but just to, to really be pushed hard on, you know, industry language, ing- industry speech, pacing and the speed of it and the professionalism of it was just absolutely an incredible experience. So this like this upcoming May, we're doing the whole film like completely start to finish. Um, that's kind of the new capstone track. So what's all involved with this capstone track and how is it kind of different from what students in the past have done? You know, for years, um, you know, for years we were sending students out to Los Angeles for a semester, which was an intensive kind of capstone experience for students to be out in LA to intern and to take some classes through the LAFSC Center, which um, because of COVID, um, it, 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 it imploded and now um, is slowly coming back to a degree, but it's not like it was, um, unfortunately, and it's not where uh, we want it to be. And, and actually, California still hasn't recovered yet. Yeah. from COVID and there's all the, so um, we that's built into a major we have this we <laughs> have this like professional experience semester built into the major what do we do so Matt and I um, rewrote 
uh, the the degree. And instead of taking the risk and sending people out to L.A. for a semester, we're like, well, why don't we bring L.A. to Huntington? And let's create a capstone immersive experience where we take a whole semester and pre-produce and work and, and get mentored by mentors during the semester in different areas of production design, audio, directing and producing, um, in uh, production design. I probably already said production design. And there's <laughs> five key areas. I probably didn't hit them all. Um, oh, post editing, you know, all that. Mm -hmm. So we have these five big areas that we want students to be really familiar with all those areas. And then in May, we're going to shoot 100 you know, pages of, of script. Um, as the students have been mentored in all the different areas, then we'll, we'll get everybody into tracks. We'll get everybody in different departments uh, when we get into the actual filming of it. And then we'll fly in these professionals and the key, to be keys in all the different areas. And we're going we're gonna to huff and puff and, and, make a, and shoot a feature in, in, in a month. Yeah. And uh, this is our first time doing it. Um, so we kind of had took some baby steps um uh this past may and ironically the year before that we actually did a uh, pre-visualization screening of the script where we just shot it the whole film in a week basically mm -hmm. just nuts and bolts real quick you know yeah. and then we did the may term this past may where it was more professional brought in pros and now this next may to june we're gonna like shoot the feature and uh, we're so excited about it <laughs> it's gonna be a lot of fun a lot yeah. of work but a lot yeah. of fun yeah, I'm interested to see kind of like how it all works together. Where are you now in the process? Well, I'm uh, producing the film. And so right now we're in the uh, friend raising part of it, friend raising, fundraising. Um, <laughs> we need to, it's a $700,000 budgeted film. We've raised, uh, you know, almost half of that um, with in, in cash and in kind. And we need about another two hundred dollars to $250,000. So mm -hmm. we're in that stage of, of fundraising um, to shore up the rest of the funds. We're also um, negotiating right now with contracts, with actors, uh, contracts with our professionals. And so we're kind of in that contract phase and the budgetary phase of it. Um, so it's kind of quiet right now. Like yeah. a lot of the students aren't seeing any of this happen. Um, but then uh, hopefully we get all that locked in by, you know, first of 2022. And then we can just focus on getting ready to, you know, make the mm -hmm. movie. Yep. It's coming up fast. So. It is coming up fast. <laughs> yes. Coming up very fast. But I'm also working on not just the Glenn Frank film. I mean, Glenn Frank is our first film of like mm -hmm. five films that we have in, in you know, early stages of pre-production. So really, as I'm going out, as I'm going out f friend raising and fundraising, I'm saying, hey, yes, we do need help with the Glenn Frank film. But we also have like three or four more films out. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're looking for in investors that want to get involved in the next five years. You know? Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, what are kind of your hopes for the, the film once it's fully completed? Obviously, we want Glenn Frank to be, to find distribution, you know, to find an audience. You know, we're not just making this for the fun of it. You know, we want, we, we feel like the story has, can have great impact and encouragement to others. And so we're also looking at um, distribution models. You know, there's so many different platforms now. Uh, with distribution to, um, you know, obviously there's uh, the traditional, you know, theater, theatrical releases uh, across America with thousands of theaters. There's international uh, box office as well. So they have box office um, in the United States. They also have international box office options. And then there's the whole online platforms of mm -hmm. so many different <laughs> ways of having things um, distributed that way. So... Yeah, and I'm learning a ton. Like, this is all very yeah. new to me to get into that world of distribution. Our goal is to make a film that is um, something as good, if not better, than what you'd see on Netflix. Yeah. You know, that, that from the very beginning, we said this has to have, like, a Netflix, Amazon, mm -hmm. Prime, professional look to it. And based on what we did this past May, I know we're going to get that. Yeah. Because it has a great aesthetic look to it. Um that's one thing, but now you got to you got to make a deal happen, you mm -hmm. know. And so now we're we're in the in make a deal stage and try to find distribution. Yeah, and our last question is: uh, How can we pray for you or for this project in general? Oh, that's a great question, and probably one of the most important aspects of it is having, you know, uh, uh, you know, giving this all to the Lord to say, hey, um, please go before us, you know, and and pray that we can find the right connections, that we can find the right um, what I call angel investors, people that want to get in. Um, early with us and and be willing to um, 
you know, see us get off the, the stage, you know, right now we're just, we need, we, we're need a way to just launch, you know, mm-hmm. this whole, you know, opportunity. Um, <clears throat> so that's important. You know, last night I was in a gathering where there was a, I met a former alumni and she came up and said hi and she was with her dad mm-hmm. and, uh, I hadn't seen, um, this, this former student for years and she is back in the Fort Wayne area and she says, this is my dad. And he's like, Oh, you want, you guys, you want to know, I pray for Huntington university every day. And I said, can you, can I put <laughs> you on, uh, uh, can I be on your prayer list here yeah. for our feature film? And he goes, well, tell me more about this. And I said, well, we're trying to make faith-based films and mm-hmm. you know, we, we're going to need help and we need all the connections. And he said, well, send me some more information about that. So I was able through LinkedIn got, uh, sent our trailer and our whole capstone, um, mm-hmm. you know, film uh, overview to to her uh, this morning and said, "Please get this to your dad. I want to be on his prayer <laughs> list." You know, because that there's so much power in yeah. that. I mean, I mean, there's m- definitely much more power in prayer than I think a lot of people really realize. Mm-hmm. And I think if God's hand is involved, then you know, ultimately it's 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 something that um, I think the Lord will just you know he, if. If it's a good thing, he's going to help it, you know, be successful. And that's the goal. Really, it's the goal is to, like, train the next generation of filmmakers, tell great stories, tell stories that are full of faith and inspiration and challenge, that talk about the human condition um, and and are successful. You know, mm-hmm. we want the goal would be <laughs> that if this mu- this these films can, you know, turn a profit, they turn right around and help fund the next project. You know, that's the goal to keep it, mm-hmm. you know, paying forward. And to bless a lot of professionals that are out there, they're coming back and mentoring the next generation. So it's a unique model. Yeah. Um, it's something I've never seen done before. I haven't seen this at any other college level, uh, especially in the CCCU. I think it's unique. I think it's dynamic. I think it's exciting. I think it's risky. But I think uh, it's okay. You, gotta, you know, mm-hmm. there's a little, no risk, no reward here. So yeah. we're stepping out in faith. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Miranda. Thank you, Clark, for joining me on this episode of Rooted, and thank you for listening. Make sure you subscribe to Rooted on iTunes, Google Play, and Spotify. And remember, you can listen to Forrester Radio over the air in Huntington on 105.5 WQHU or by visiting our website, forresterdigital.net.